Hi, welcome to the second blog for November 2010. I didn't start off on the desk time, like desktop last time, so uh, you didn't see the new desktop for the new month. Well, here we are. Not yet snow, although when we were in Penrith on Friday there was a little up on the tops. I'm going to start straight away as usual. I'm going into the blog. Um, basically what I'm doing this time, slightly different, is that I'm recording the podcast and the vidcast before I publish it so that when people go onto the blog they have the chance to watch and listen or just listen to the podcast rather than have to sit and read it. Anyhow, first finds today. Uh, first find is Doodle. Doodle is one of a number of scheduling services. It takes the pain out of finding uh, the right date and time for a group of people to make and makes scheduling fairly effortless. The basic service is free. Um, it doesn't require um, registration or software installation. Uh, the account does not require for Doodle, however if you do have an account it does actually give you some advantages. Let's just go to the uh, website he says, here we are. As you can see you can uh, schedule events, it gives you some information about uh, premium Doodle. I just wonder if I've got, yes I have, here we go. Yeah, we've got Premium Doodle, personalised scheduling for individuals, which is ad-free, one of the advantages of um, paying for the service. There's a branded Doodle, and you can connect to a Google Calendar, a Microsoft Outlook Calendar, and so on. Those are some of the advantages that you will get. Let me just uh, zoom back out. I'm using a zoom it by the way to go in and have a look at some of the page. The uh, second find is uh, from JISC Legal. Uh, as you will know, JISC uh, Legal um, provide a number of services for further education sector. It's part of JISC Advance as we are. It's um, a, a JISC Legal eSafety Policy Template. It's available in Word and PDF formats and it's a guide to help learning providers write effective eSafety policies that reflects their unique learning community and context. It gives you heading statements and content that you can adapt to suit your own needs. If you go onto the website, and obviously the website's at the top of the page in the vidcast every time, You'll uh, see that here you've got the option, let me just zoom in so you can see it. Here we've got the options to download a Word document or a PDF uh, document of that particular template. The uh, next find is um, Understanding Virtualization Solutions. I've heard my colleague Keith, our technical advisor in particular, discussing learning provider network managers who are engaged with virtualization projects and I'm aware that it's very important to their ICT infrastructure. Uh, the reasons given for this include cutting carbon emissions, improving network reliability and service levels, managing their workload and or reducing costs. The question is though, is what's the difference between server virtualization and desktop virtualization and is virtualization and moving to the cloud <laughs> the same thing? Um, do the learning provider managers who are empowered to make decisions about virtualization know the answers to those questions? What's needed is uh, a reference guide written in plain English and this free downloadable um, guide is probably what we're looking for. It's called Understanding Microsoft Virtualization Solutions from Desktop to Data Center. Let me just open it up. This is the actual downloaded um, resource and if I zoom in he says on the left hand side you can see the chapters that are involved um, things like uh, why virtualization server virtualization 
local desktop vir virtualization, remote desktop virtualization, virtualization management, cloud computing, etc. Okay, there are other things within the uh, particular uh, publication. Things like, and I'll zoom in again so you can actually read them. Oh, here we go. Um, Microsoft Virtual Desktops Infrastructure, the Application Virtualization 4.5, etc. Well worth downloading. The um, website link or the link to download has been at the top of the page throughout this chat about it. Next find from the BBC. It's audio interviews recorded by the BBC now in a collection online called In Their Own Words. It's got audio interviews with British novelists Virginia Woolf, Aldous Huxley, J.R.R. R. Tolkien, Doris Leasing, uh, Martin Amis, uh, V.S. Nepal, Salman Rushdie, etc. The website itself, when you go on to it, obviously advertising in children in need when I produce this, um, shows you a little bit about the collection itself. And if I just scroll down a little bit further, I can show you some of the, the, the people who are involved. There you go. Virginia Woolf, W. Somerset Maughan, Elizabeth Bowen, okay, P.G. Woodhouse etc okay there's a whole load of interviews which i'm sure many of you will find of interest and or useful in teaching and learning the uh, next find is for the biologists the scientists among us um, it's called virtual cell animation collection it's been developed to introduce learners to new concepts the learners are in control of choosing the learning style that best fits their needs as they work through still uh, images, animations that are included with each topic. If we go to the website itself, you'll see that there are a number of um, animations that include regulated transcription, insulin signaling, protein recycling, right the way through to perhaps things that are a little bit more generally known about things like photosynthesis and so on those um, video clips as i say or the animation collection uh, i'm sure that many of you who are engaged in science will find them very useful good to great i was wilfing when i came across this wilfing as some of you will already know is what was i looking for i followed a link um, on twitter from somebody that I follow. It was a retweet and I ended up on Stephanie Dedar's blog. And in the process of looking at her blog, let's just go to it now, uh, I came across this entry. It's um, an excellent instructional guide. Let's just zoom in for you. Okay, it's an excellent instructional design guide, a 10 tip beginner's guide. And uh, let's just zoom back out. If I scroll down the page, embedded in this is this slideshow that is on SlideShare. Okay, and and I think uh, many of you will find this uh, of interest. You just need to click on the uh, the right hand side or left to move through the slides, or you can go and view it on SlideShare itself directly. Um, that was the alternative title. So you've got Make Your Next E-Learning Course Engaging, Relevant and Effective. And it goes through a, a number of slides. So I'm just going to click through to them fairly quickly. Okay, and just bear with me. It goes through the 10 things. And there they are. Let's just zoom in so you can see them. Those are the 10 uh, tips summarized very quickly as part. Uh, you're not going to be surprised that the last find is me taking the opportunity to bring to your attention feedback from one of our events. Craig Taylor's blog reviews the Using Video Technology event that we held at the Ramada Hotel in Bolton. Um, you can read what Craig had to say by going on to his 
Um, he calls it Video Enhanced the Radio Star, and he goes through and gives you feedback on the sort of event that you could have attended for free if you're here in the Northwest, um, and you can see what you missed out on. For those of you who uh, couldn't go and who would like the resources that were given out uh, free at the end, then go to um, our uh, e-magazine supplements. It's Make a Difference Part 3, and it basically has all of the uh, resources that were covered by myself in the afternoon session. And uh, you can also download it from our Zipdexy library as well. I would say it goes through uh, the current situation. It deals with things like travel plans. Um, and there are a number of uh, links, etc., that you may want to have a look at. There's the sustainable travel plans that I was talking about. And it goes into, we can't go on meetings like this including business cases video conferencing and other such things okay hope that that will be useful to you all so that's a quick overview of the seven finds for the second blog for um, november 2010 hope there was something there for you and uh, i'll talk to you again when i found seven more things